Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, You Know What podcast. This is uh, episode 10. My name is James Isaac Neutron. I may be small, but I have a big brain, if you know what I mean. Brain, you know, brain blast and uh, whatnot. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I'm joined by, uh, you know, the guys that are always joining me. Who are you guys? Give us a little bit of an intro here. I'm Fig Newton. Fig Newton. All right. (laughs) Nice to meet you, man. Isn't that the name? Hey, isn't that the name of a snack? Some little snacky cake? Sure is. Figs. Fig Newton. And uh, who else we got here? I uh, can't think of anything uh, too witty, <laughs> <laughs> so just Paul. Today. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that I, James. Either of us counted as witty. <laughs> <laughs> we have Fig Newton and James Isaac Neutron. Yes, very witty stuff. Nobody ever would have thought of that. Well, it's all good. I was gonna call uh, Fred the uh, the extreme metal library of a man. <laughs> oh, that that works. That works. It's uh, it's flattering. Yeah. Library library of a man. You <laughs> library of a man. <laughs> what are we uh, getting here uh, tonight for? What are we? We're uh, we're gonna do whore, but uh, before before uh, we get into that, I wanted to uh, just share something kind of stupid that happened today. Uh, we, we don't, I accidentally we, we, we don't do that on this show. No, we don't <laughs> do that. That doesn't ever happen. No, I, I accidentally referred to my dog as Paul. <laughs> oh. Because, um, yeah, because I, I don't know if you know this, Fred, but uh, I think I mentioned it before, but uh, I sell car parts, like, with my dad as a family business kind of thing. Right. At, like, swap meets and eBay and uh, other I- international kind of stuff. Sure. And uh, I was I was at the swap meet yesterday, uh, you know, and I'm sitting there waiting for people to buy stuff, so I figure uh, I'll get out my headphones and... You know, maybe take some notes and uh, see what I can come up with for the show. And uh, my dad asked me, he goes, hey, what are you writing a book? And so I had to explain to him what I was doing. I'm like, oh, we're doing this uh, broadcast thing. I guess he knew what a podcast was. I, I For some reason, I thought he wouldn't know what that is. Huh. And um, yeah, so I told him about that. And then uh, this morning, I went out with uh, my parents to breakfast. And it's fun, or uh, yeah. But before we went out to breakfast, uh, I was talking to my dad, and he he goes, uh, "So Paul, he goes, Paul, Paul, the twin Paul. He's on the. He knows Paul. He's like he's he's on the podcast." I go, "Yeah." He goes, "He talks," because I'd never heard him form a full sentence ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quiet so man. <laughs> quiet man. Yeah, but like right after we're we're uh, he mentions you, I call the dog because I call him Little Dean. I go, "Come here, Little Paul." Like Little Paul. <laughs> but but he did this he did the same thing too um like we we're, we're loading up parts for uh, the swedish guy that we sell to bjorn yeah bjorn and we we finished up packing his stuff and then uh my dad calls the dog in he goes come here bjorn dean <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah, dude. Everybody in my family does that. I don't know why. My my uh, got my the human gran- name. My old grandfather used to no, but my old grandfather used to do that with his dogs. And his dogs, well, I guess they're kind of human names. But he would call like me or my cousin or my mom or something, and he go up, he go, Bobby, uh, Mitzi, Tony. <laughs> it's very easy to get them uh, mixed up as the uh, <laughs> owner of three dogs and a daughter. Uh, yeah, it, it, it happens. The just, struggle's real. Just reactionary, huh? <laughs> yeah, my, my my grandmother still does that, but she doesn't do with the dog's name. She just confuses me, my dad, and my uncle. So she'll be calling me. She'll go, oh, or I'll say something smart to her. She'll go, oh, David, I'll carry that, Dad. <laughs> but she does that with all of us. Just goes through the checklist. Yeah, and that, that my, the same uh, old grandpa, like, I guess he, because I, I was born when he was already pretty old. So a lot of the time when he would uh, talk to me, he'd go, hey, hey, Greggy. I'm not Greggy, man. <laughs> not Greggy. <laughs> yeah, sure you are. <laughs> Greggy. I'll be your uh, pseudonym uh, next uh, episode. Well, for some reason, <laughs> my cousin Greg, he used to call me uh, a doobie head when I was like a little kid. I'm not sure why. I wasn't smoking doobies. 
He goes, ha, oh, doobie head. Okay, that's something you could do. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Right. So, anyways, yeah, uh, my pick this week, I wanted to cover uh, the band Whore from Sweden. And these guys have one single demo tape, and then they didn't do anything else. And um, the guy, the drummer from Demon Slot actually showed this to me um, the last time I saw him. And it, it was kind of weird, because like the last time I saw him was already in 2019. And before that, it was already like two years um, after I left uh, Funeral Smoke, the band that I was uh, with him. And then I just decided not to do live shows with that band anymore. But I remember driving around and he was showing me all kinds of stuff. And um, this is one that stuck with me. I just thought it was really fucking cool. Um, there's really not too much to say about like who is in this band or, or what they do. I mean, we, we kind of see what the obvious uh, comparison is going to be. But uh, I guess the only thing that uh, or the only person in this band that's like notable is their the main guy their, um I think he was on bass, vocals, and guitar. Uh, his name is Leo, and he's actually in uh, like a traditional heavy metal band now called Century. And I've noticed them getting uh, some more notoriety, like as the years have gone on. I think they had a demo tape in 2020, and now they have an album in 2023. I actually, um, I actually reached out to him to uh, be on the compilation, but I never got a response. But I thought uh, I thought I thought Century would be a, a cool fit, but it's kind of interesting, like going from this and then to kind of the rest of his catalog is just uh, like trad metal stuff. But I guess this kind of shows where uh, like where his mindset is or was, because um, this thing is pretty just solid. I just like it a lot. It, it's not that groundbreaking or. Um, I don't know what the what the word would be, but uh, yeah, maybe not not the most groundbreaking thing, but a very very solid thing. And I guess um, so. The main comparison would be Necrovore, right? Yeah, sounds right to me. Yeah, I mean, even the logo looks a lot like Necrovore. Uh, in you know, like when the the like blue filled out when you see sometimes like in interviews yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I can, uh, well, you gave that away to me because when I was first yeah. listening with you, I was like, uh, uh, what'd I say? Um, you're, you're, I, I, cause I kind of, I kind of hinted at it. I was like, so this band is pretty much a worship band, but I, I kind of wanted you to see if you could get it, but you didn't really know who Necrovore, or you weren't really familiar with Necrovore anyways, right? No, I think my comparison, I said Liars and Wait. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one, because I always thought Liars and Wait was kind of one of these uh, offshoots of what uh, of like what Necrophore would do. I always considered Incubus to be one of them, and, and Morbid Angel to an extent, too. Yeah. When I was um, looking up the members of the band, I uh, saw, like, the drummer, and I was, you know, looking online, seeing if there's any interviews, because I know he's in, like, that other band, Desolate, uh, Desolator. And I ended up like on his Instagram page, and I saw him with the, uh, um, what do you say, um, Incubus, uh, the shirt. From, are you talking uh, about Mike Browning, or are you talking about? Um, who no, are you talking the, about? the drummer from Horror. He was wearing the Incubus shirt. Is uh, it the drummer from Horror, or is it the drummer from Century? Because it's the same guy. The drummer from Horror. The drummer from Horror. Millie Hunkengren. Yeah, okay, yeah. I think you're talking about Leo. Yeah, no. any, anyways, go on. What were you saying? But yeah, I just saw him like with the, you know, Incubus uh, shirt. So they're probably, he was obviously like into the shit that they're making right here with Whore, you know? Yeah. But that's like as far as I can find anything about this band. Just, yeah. Like, they, one little influence there. Yeah, they had, they have a Facebook page. And the only thing they ever did on the Facebook page was like advertise that their yeah, tape was for sale and that's pretty much it that and like repost <laughs> other shit yeah you know talking about uh, incubus for a second that there's a couple things i wanted to bring up with that um i listened to that a bunch i listened to like kind of a lot of stuff that was not not just this demo but a lot of stuff that's um pretty necrophore influenced yeah and i was looking at the 
or I was I was listening to uh, Incubus the demo, and I don't think I ever really got a good good look at uh, what the album cover is, or what the demo cover is. It looks pretty awesome. It's like, if I'm remembering correctly, it's like uh, isn't there some, there's a couple demons on the bottom and like the big roll of skulls at the top, and there's like two chicks hugging the big like smiling harlequin face. That looks like exactly it. Yeah. I'd have to look at it because I don't remember off the top of my head what it's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you got a big upside down crucifix. You have like a fucking demon skull with horns. Yeah, yeah. And there's like some fire, and then there's like two chicks hugging the smiling guy's face with a bunch of skulls at the top. That guy and looks I'm like, like oh a yeah, I see it. Real sicko with his eyes rolled back. Yeah, yeah, he's a real <laughs> sicko, dude. He he look. I don't know why he looks like some kind of juggalo or some kind yeah. of rapper or something. <laughs> like it, it doesn't really look like a demon. It just looks like some fat guy. Yeah, that's um. Uh, it's like really it's getting off of these. On, yeah, yeah. Sicko shit. Yeah, I. You know, I just discovered this too. Uh, Fred, you probably knew about this already, but um, the other band that uh, Sterling was in, uh, Usurper. Did you know about that already? You probably did. Uh, I knew of it, but I never actually checked it out until you sent the link. Oh, man. It is really fucking cool. Yeah. I love his vocals. They're so weird. It's funny to be talking about an, another band called Usurper. <laughs> another band called Usurper? I'm sure there's there's quite a few, right? Well, there's the, the other American one from... I don't know where the fuck. The one that started as a dead youth and then split it off into... Um, into Usurper and uh, Scepter. I don't know if I'm familiar with that one. I, I was thinking of the uh, other Usurper. Paul sent me. Um, I, I had actually known about these guys for a, a little while. It's the guy from uh, Einsatzgruppen. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I think so. Einsatzgruppen, and uh, he also did a band called Satanic Prophecy, where they kind of sounded mm -hmm. like uh, Gorgoroth or something. But yeah, he he also does like uh, this Argus Lent worship kind of thing, and I guess there's something new coming out with that band uh, on Drakkar. Oh, okay. I know the uh, the Usurper I that I was talking about is the uh, they went from what Chicago? I think they're from Chicago. Um, Chicago. Kind of black thrash sort of thing, similar to like uh, they're hugely Celtic Ross influenced and. Um, Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, just kind of classic sort of thing like that. They were like broken up for quite a while, but they just reformed like, I want to say five years ago ish, and uh, finally put out another album after like God knows how long. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, um, I, I guess with this demo, besides just it's it's solid. It's fucking pretty. It's just a solid thing. We can kind of get into uh, what it sounds like and maybe some of the differences later. But um, I think, of course, Necrovore, but another one that I think might be a pretty big uh, maybe influence on this band or at least something pretty similar to what Necrovore was doing at the same time, same year, uh, Obscurity from Sweden, mm -hmm. the demo uh, Damnation's Pride. Yep. I never really noticed that. I, I always knew what that was and have given it a listen, but... Now, like I, I, I'm totally hearing the Necrovore, uh, kind of more. Maybe Morbid Angel is is kind of the full uh, influencer of Necrovore, or or something like that. Maybe. Yeah, no, I definitely think Morbid Angel is a good influence on uh, on Necrovore. Kind of just kind of the, I guess, Godfather of the whole debacle. But um, yeah, yeah, Necrovore, yeah. Necrovore kind of took it in a bit more of a almost chaotic direction than Morbid Angel did. Sure, like an almost nonsensical uh, direction. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the closest thing to um, sarcophago, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's, 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 that's sure. Yeah, yeah. Really, that was what was really cool about this demo. You don't see a ton of necrovore styled bands, and getting one that pulls it off really well is—it's a treat, right? Like I wasn't—I uh, wasn't familiar with this demo before we listened to it, and uh, I, I gotta say, of the. Um, albums we've covered on this show of the ones I wasn't familiar with before, this one's probably my favorite so far Damn. nice yeah, yeah, dude, it's it's extremely solid especially for one of these kind of worship bands like they, they do they do this so well mm -hmm. and um, I, I kind of mentioned this before 
uh, this kind of goes to like a band that I wanted to cover originally, but I felt already had enough notoriety, and that is uh, Beyond. Because this is oh man, that was, this is I can't believe they broke up after one album. I know that that's so weird. It's like, dude, they they had a great, like, it was produced well. It got great fucking recognition. It got great like notoriety right away. Everybody loved it on Iron Bonehead. It's like, yeah. wh- why are you done? Maybe, may- but maybe that's just. They felt like they did what they wanted to do, and they felt no need to uh, continue. That's how it was meant to be. Yeah, there, there was another band that, um, I guess, kind of continues this. Maybe not just the Necrovore thing, but like a full um, continuation of Beyond. Uh, a band called Omega Vortex. Have either of you guys heard of them? Yeah, I've uh, heard them in passing, but never mm-hmm. listened to them. Didn't give me the same same vibes as beyond it was you know it's it's a really hard one like i've constantly said that uh that beyond album is one of the best death metal albums this side of the 2000s like it's just it's so solid for me it's incredible yeah it's it's pretty great but yeah somebody was saying about the uh, or somebody on a youtube comment was saying about omega omega vortex that uh this is like fatal power of death too and i kind of get that it's like coming into the same sort of influence but it's it's much more dissident like necrovore has the dissidence but kind of just a little touch of it and i think that's what horror also touches on there is just a inkling of dissidence there's not a whole lot with it's horror overdoing. yeah yeah with ho- yeah it's totally overdoing it with horror it's more um it's kind of it's it's more of like what uh, Beyond is doing, except I feel this band has more of the um, the, the 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 dynamic slow down parts and also the like single note things rather than um, just power chords. But everything that they do here with with all of these elements, the dissonance, the power chords, the tremolo notes, the like slow down, these like uh, little scale kind of things. They just do it really well. And um, I guess the vocals on this and beyond and Omega Vortex and Necrovore, they're all like pretty fucking similar. It it sounds like they're all just trying to do what uh, Necrovore did, especially with the vocals. But um, the the vocal style kind of reminds you of the like the South American thrash scene to a degree. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I get that. that. Echoing kind of feel to it. And uh, it's. Still like death mo- death vocals, but a little hoarser, like a little almost a little shouted. It's uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, it's that's a good one. Yeah, I think because um, this comes out in 2011, and that's kind of an interesting year for like a few reasons. Uh, for me, it felt like the retro death kind of thing, especially in Sweden, was really like kind of booming in 2011. And I feel like there's a not just in Sweden, but there was a few bands outside of Sweden and and uh, in the States that did this kind of um, death metal with like inklings of progressive kind of stuff. Not not to the point where you would ever call it a progressive death metal band, but enough to kind of make a statement and to. um to like make kind of make a small scene within itself for the uh, retro death uh, mm. thing, and I, with bands like this, I'm talking about uh, something like Morbus Cron. I feel did this. I think I might have mentioned on an episode before that Morbus Cron sounds like uh, maybe like a psychedelic autopsy or something. Yeah, but they yeah, but they they still have the modern feel to it. Uh, Horrendous was another one who I well, I love the first two Horrendous albums. Um, They've Tribulation kind of, got off, kind of got off the deep end though, haven't they? Oh yeah, I am not a fan of what they've done. Yeah, after the after the second album, I love the second album, the uh, Excitus or whatever. Uh, yeah, the one with the guy's face getting ripped off. Yeah, did you ever hear that one? Yeah, I've got. I think that's the no. I have Anretta as well. That one's still okay. It was um, after that the one with the. Uh, I forget what it's called when the uh, guy's head, turn is turning, head is turning to a puzzle. Uh, that uh, kind of went a bit too far for me in that direction. Yeah. And um, 
I, I listened to the new song they put out. Uh, I did too. A couple, couple weeks ago. I, I thought I, it was I boring. I don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't hate it, but I'm. I'm probably not going to pick up the album. No, no. Like I said, the the third album is. I, I wanted to like. The one, the one you were just talking about with the guy's head, like a bunch of squares coming out of it. Yeah, I wanted to like those albums, but it's just not cutting it. But that that second, um, that second horrendous album for me, that one was really, really something. I think yeah, it came out in twenty fourteen. Um, that one for me is almost like a part two for like an ever flowing stream. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because I mean, like an ever flowing stream, it, it had hints of like melody and stuff, but with horrendous, it kind of took everything that like an ever flowing stream did and like amped it up and made it almost like a fucking guitar hero, kind of not the video game guitar hero, but like a local like uh, <laughs> like a local town kid uh, fucking guitar shredding guy, and it, it all at, at times it's stupid to say, but it's like almost like death clock kind of melodies, like this very grandiose giant uh, universal fucking sound. I just thought it was great. I, I listened to a little bit of that last night. Titan, what a song. I don't go back to it too often. I mean, and it's not a huge surprise um, in that sense. I tend to like my death metal fairly straightforward and knuckle dragging, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, and that one kind of goes a bit too far in the uh, let's just call it progression for the sake of argument. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super often, but uh, it's. Well, you're I talking about like the it, second album, the right? Hobby. With the, with yeah, the progression. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. The first album All right. Is pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, HM two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I felt like the second one it didn't really um, the progression wasn't in the main songs. The progression was kind of in the middle in the interludes, like where you had the instrumental heavy metal track, and then you had uh, you had like the the fucking flamenco track and shit like that. Yeah. Like that's that's a bit too much for me. Like I just like just give me just give me good riffs. That's all I need. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's what this um sort of reminded me of uh the horror demo. It kind of reminded me of that the the uh the horrendous type and uh, Ataraxy and Morbus Cron and Tribulation a little bit in the mm. sense that it's it's really ambitious and the the kinds of the, the way the ways that it changes up in the song so smoothly it just feels really competent and and also really like um old school in a way but not not in a in a um in a in a lame kind of retro way old school in a way that is just uh like really genuine i guess yeah yeah that's the thing right like this demo sounds like it was ripped right out of being contemporary with like necrovore blood spill incubus Mutilator yeah, yeah. Or whatever, right? So, yeah, maybe uh, Ex Mortis as well. The first one. Yeah, people don't talk about Ex Mortis enough. That was no, I, I I haven't talked about them in a long time. But I used to, at some point, I remember listening to all their demos like over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um, also kind of Deadhead too. If you remember that band, they they were pretty yeah. fucking good. I haven't revisited in such a long time. Have you, uh, have you guys listened to Blood Spill? Yes, did listen to Blood Spill. That album was. Well, the album demo was sick for 88 that's uh, yeah 88 pretty fantastic. good shit yeah that was i was gonna i i forgot to bring that up but um yeah after incubus kind of blood spill fits in perfectly with with this uh this little sect yeah. and there may be a few other bands maybe we'll get into that in a little bit Me but um yeah <laughs> who mutilated from france I mutilated from France, dude. I don't think I know who that is. Oh, they're basically the French Necrovore. They started holy off as shnikes. Started off as Mutilator, uh, changed names to Mutilated because obvious reasons. Uh, yep. And then there was a successor band called Abyssals, and they're uh, also pretty good. But uh, that the section when they were called Mutilated is the uh, uh, is the the cream of the crop there. Ah, okay. Uh, no, one last you thing. Will, you will you will dig them. You will dig them. Mutilated. Okay, I'll remember that. Um, one last thing before uh, we move on a little bit. I wanted to uh, like I just thought of something while you were talking about mutilated. Um, a band called Abyssus, who I was checking out recently. I I'd heard them uh, when they came out, but kind of never went back. They only had one out or 
maybe they had two. They have one album that I remember. The Abyssus from uh, Germany. And maybe this isn't so much of the Necrovore thing, but it definitely, uh, it's definitely like 80s death metal. Um, God damn, that guy's fucking worship. picture looks scary, bro. From Abyssus? <laughs> yeah. Is that the one where they're in the fucking swamp? I must be looking at a different one. Uh, no, I, I believe they're from Germany. Yeah, I'm looking at a German one. It's like from their black metal, though. No, anyway. the death metal one. Their, their picture is, uh, they're like fucking standing in the middle of a swamp. Oh, okay, I see this. You see one what now. I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 2013 uh, album. You guys, either of you guys, know this one? No, no. Check this out. It's it's pretty 80s death metal, uh, but you know, with a little bit of the modern production and, and edge to it. Uh, yeah, I would rem I would uh, recommend this one. It's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Check so um, check out the other the... Uh, abysses from uh, Germany real quick. <laughs> okay, let me check this out. The black metal one. Oh this yeah, is... I see him by the creepy Victor. <laughs> uh, I, I'm spell I'm spelling the name wrong. How are you spelling it? A B Y S U S. Yep. S U S. Yep. Oh okay. Let's see. From Germany. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like one of uh, King Cobra's friends or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, he has his mouth uh, uh, sewn shut and shit mouth too. Mouth sewn shut. <laughs> yeah, like the crust band, Milestone shit. <laughs> well, kind of anyway, like, Ray, like reggae makes a crust. Yeah, anyways. Like the demo's probably not that good. <laughs> yeah, Ju just, just judging by that band picture? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, maybe not. All right. Oh, the so, album cover looks good, though. Does it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it Let's worse. see. I didn't take a look at the album. Let's see, demo 2008. Oh, they got an looks... Iron Maiden cover on here. <laughs> <laughs> Revelations. All right. <laughs> anyway anyways um paul i uh i'm no. curious to hear what you have to say about this just because uh what, what what did you really know i mean did you know the name necrovore or like familiarity wise what yeah. did you think of of the of the whole thing like uh, of what you kind of came across plus well let's get with, to the horror thing first and then your kind of thoughts on um necrovore and, and all that kind of stuff well, horror, um, mm -hmm. that was the first time of me hearing something like that because I obviously wasn't too familiar with Necrovore. But, um, you know, comparing the... Oh. Comparing those <laughs> albums together. Paul problems. PP. <laughs> PP. Um, but, yeah, anyway, um, those... Uh, I was comparing those two uh, demos, you know, and mm -hmm. it is very, uh, you know, comparable to that 87 demo and the 88 one, too, from uh, Necovore. But yeah, they're, they're the same songs, by the way. Oh, are they? It's just a yes. little bit better production, huh? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I was, I was checking those out. And, you know, obviously those ones feel a lot more just like savage and pure like intensity and momentum. You yeah. know, for this, for um, what they're doing and making, using thrash as like a tool rather than a fucking crutch. Um, but we can probably get into that another day of my uh, gripe with thrash. But um, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe if we have time today. But uh, yeah, go on, go on. But yeah, um, you know, just like those atonal wrists are just not even in the same key. They don't really even give a fuck about um, uh, much structure or anything but i i feel like horror was a little a little bit more mindful of that even yeah. even in like that first song where there's like that noise bit with the guitar i just it's like sounds like two carry kings uh, fighting at it um um yeah well they have a long time to uh kind of perfect the craft don't they yeah and um yeah they weren't they with horror they weren't so much sacrificing structure for their chaos it was like it seemed to be um control but like had a lot of leash to it you know it still yeah. wasn't um it still wasn't like anything uh like i'm sure this was either a rehearsal recording or at least a live demo you know yeah the production is really good on the yeah. on the demo too yeah and um with the my favorite track on this uh horror tape was um actually the second song treacherous paths or whatever yeah, just because yeah. that, that, like, fucking 
bending riff. That, that that's like some fucking primitive ass shit. Just like it kind of reminded like, me of an old funeral from, from Norway. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of moments in there where I didn't think of that. Yeah, I, I don't really song? see. Yeah, I don't really see why this band wouldn't be taking things from other places, and I'm I'm sure they were. But like the the basis is Necrovore, but yeah, uh, maybe funeral has something to do with it, and I I would assume that uh, just all kinds of old, old death and black metal probably have something to do like with with how these guys um operate with Necrovore as kind of a base. Yeah, just uh, it's basically like I don't even know if it's like trad, but definitely like that primordial type uh you know death black thrash uh niche and shit because at that time there's a lot of shit coming out that's kind of sticking to their guns with one genre but i see some people sort of uh what they have a bone to pick with uh necrovore it's usually like saying oh it, they're not really deciding on like where to go um and they're kind of have like a, a lot that they're trying to do are trying to figure out but you know it's a fucking demo that's what you guys are doing and even if they were to continue and find a sound i feel like this shit would be their demos are gonna be where it's at you know yeah i mean they kind of continued i forget what the name of the band is that um at least one of the members uh was in because i believe when i was playing shows with funeral smoke we actually played a show with the uh the continuing band that is uh, Necrovore. I forget exactly what, what they were called, though. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Uh, would it be Bloodstorm? Because they've been going for a while. I don't I don't think it was Bloodstorm. It, it was uh, some somebody else. Let me see. Uh... But for the record, Bloodstorm is fucking great. I've been hearing about Bloodstorm. Um, you know what? I have checked these guys out before. It's just uh, it's it's been quite a while, but I I, I, I know I, I know these guys. But um yeah, while you look for that, I was gonna continue with like yeah, go ahead for this coming out in like 2011, along with those revival bands, you know, yeah. they are obviously a lot more. They're a lot different from from those bands, and even the like wave of of old school death metal that came i guess contemporary or a little after that wave of like the swedish revival um where those bands were primarily focusing on um you know just heaviness autopsy dismember stuff yeah, like that just like more of the heavy shit more of um trying to be i guess more precise with their sound and utilizing the production um I think you said it last week um, as we were just talking um, where you're saying like bands hide behind uh, or people say that bands hide behind bad production but they can also hide behind the good production too and um, I was going to say with horror they are taking that like savage part of, of that early death metal without really concentrating on like heaviness because I feel like that precision and heaviness, trying to get the heaviest sound with production, you're sacrificing that like intensity and um, you know savage nature of what um, all those death metal demos were about at that uh, at that time, like from '85 to you know '89, that kind of niche era of fucking savage primordial death metal. Yeah. So they, you I know, feel like they captured it really well. Yeah, you know, I never really thought of that, but now that you say it, it does make sense. A lot of the um, retro death of the time, and and still today, like the retro death, the retro death stuff that goes on, um, I feel like it, it does lack the intensity, and it's kind of more focused on uh, atmosphere. Yeah, at, like a, an atmosphere with like kind of hanging uh, hanging power cords rather than ripping. You know, yeah, stuff like that. Because that shit was taking a lot from, you know, the thrash that was obviously going on at the time, but they just made it way more intense because I feel like. It's really, had... it's really intense. It's like, it's, you know, we can say it's more intense than Necrovore, but again, that's like. 
Shame on you. Yeah, but you know what I mean. You know what I, you know what I kind of mean by that. Yeah, I know. I, I, it's like I'm, I'm hesitant to say that, but like it what, kind of, it, it kind of is. Like, what would you rather listen to, Necrovore's intensity or Hate Eternal's intensity? Uh, Necrovore for sure, Necrovore. because there's like no soul in Hate Eternal, man. There's like no, no, no. Hate Eternal, you don't remember anything. With Necrovore, you remember everything. With Whore, you remember everything. Same thing with Beyond. Uh, maybe maybe not Omega Vortex because that's kind of uh, you know a <laughs> little a little too dissonant. Ba uh, you know I, I guess Concrete Winds is oh, kind of doing the same yeah. thing, but uh, they're they're a bit more memorable. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's actually trying to write something catchy but like in the most intense way possible rather than like mm -hmm. oh feel how flattening and crushing and skin ripping this album is. It's like, no, just fucking listen to this shit and you're going to like it and you're going to play it over and over again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But Fred, um, you want to say something before we uh, go into the Pivot. sample for this? Uh, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> all right. All right, let's... Uh, we said it all. Let's go into uh, the sample and then we can go off from there talking about... Uh, you Some know. more crap. All right, so we're going to listen to the first song. Um, go ahead and intro it, Dan. Right. All right, I'm here, ready to go. Uh, this is the first song off of the horror demo tape. It's called Unreverberate Blackness. There you go. We'll be right back. I gotta say. <laughs> Your turn, Fred. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Remember the second song? There's there's a part in the second song where like it breaks down and the bass goes doo doo doo, and then it stops again. And it goes. Ugh. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I... we had the uh, Morbid Angel solo in there. Yeah, the nice uh, thrash calm breakdown get, that you catch your breath from what you just heard. The uh, Nazgul vocal, the Nazgul dying vocal. Yeah, yeah, that was a cool <laughs> dual vocal effect. Like that was well done. Yeah, I know. Wasn't that so cool? It's better than anything uh, Glenn Glenn Benton could do. No, just kidding. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, <laughs> homage to Satan. It's, it's not better than the homage to Satan solo though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this is uh yeah when i first heard it liars and wait like instantly just from how fast they're going with those uh it's like corded riffs and then um just when you think they're at their limit they pull out something even fucking faster and of yeah. course of course within those that like what is it even like two or three minutes song two bring, two minutes 50 seconds yeah they bring out the fucking doom parts right there and uh yeah, they have they have it all in there. The little um, bit of mel the little bit of the melody kind of thing. Gunk, 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 gunk. Yeah. yeah, they got it all. It's all right there, and you, just like, dude, this is good. This is dank. Yeah, good, uh, good pick. Right on. How did you come across this one? Um. Oh wait. Uh, wait, 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 wait it was the, uh, the yeah 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 the drummer from Demon right. Slot showed this to me when we were driving around. We I forget what we were looking for. He was looking for something at a sam ash and then we couldn't find it so we went to guitar center i think we smoked so i kind of i remember i was kind of out of it that day but uh i remember he just played this in the van and and you know sometimes when you smoke and like you're kind of just feeling the music you're just like whoa whoa so that's that's what i was feeling here and it, it stuck i i come back to this thing um pretty often because it's just solid. Yeah, Angel always had those uh, cult uh, picks. Yeah, a Angel was always this guy. He was the guy that had us do a fucking um, LLN kind of uh, tribute demo. Did he show For... you uh, Sartan? Yes, he did. He did. Uh, yeah. I think we smoked, and then we went to Murphy Ranch, and on the way back, we listened to Sartan. Yeah, so that's, that was, that's a really that was kind of the good ritual. one, too. Yeah, uh, it is. The Argentinian band? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fucking excellent. Yeah, that shit. I was thinking about that for a future episode. I was too. I was actually thinking the same damn thing. So you get to it first. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Let's uh, let's see. Um, some questions that were like spawning as I was uh, listening to this this week was like, obviously this band's a worship band. I wouldn't necessarily say that they're better than uh, Necrovore, but is there a worship band that's better than the band that they're worshiping? No, not really. Ooh. Never? I don't know. Maybe Fred has something in mind, but uh, I, 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 yeah, I just heard a that. hard no. I think there's, I think there's, <laughs> there's some definite potential there. Yeah, it was just like something I was thinking of. Yeah, cause... yeah. If not better, if not better than Necrovore, there's definitely fucking potential here, because everything is so clear and so dynamic and just draws you in. It's just, it's it's really fucking great. Yeah. Yeah, I can't give them better than Necrovore. They yeah, you can't. Come... Don't don't do that. They probably come closer than they should, but. No, yes. They yeah, they come they closer than they should. And uh, uh, comparing comparing this to other bands that worship Necrovore, I would uh, probably say it's 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 up there with Beyond, for me. I gotta check yeah. out Beyond and to make that comparison, but you guys giving it high praise, so it 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 really yeah. is because Beyond's great, but this is. I don't know. It feels a lot. It just this release. It feels immediate. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, very. Very, yeah, very. Just vis there's visceral. no fucking around at all. Yeah, no, no thinking about it. Just feel it, listen. I yeah. feel like Beyond does fuck around a little bit, but not. I think it works the way Beyond does it because Beyond has like some strange intros and stuff, but they 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 all work very well, like yeah, for atmosphere. Beyond's different though. Like that's a full album too, right? Like it's yeah, 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 exactly. More going on. Yeah, there's there's much more going on with that. And that's 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 kind of what I was hinting at as well. Is like I had already told you guys I wanted to. I originally had Beyond pick, but I felt they already had um, 
kind of the the, the recognition that they needed where where this kind of doesn't you know what i mean yeah, yeah for sure definitely doing them a service at least for to get me and fred to listen to it because we both love it i think right fred yeah. You know, All right. this is going to be a bit vague, but in terms of worship bands that are better than the originals, yeah. some of the synth wave stuff that comes out these days, I know it's not like strictly worship of a specific band, but they sound more 80s than the 80s. <laughs> hmm. And sometimes like, I find myself when I want to hear something really, really 80s sounding, I wind up listening to bands that came out like a couple of days, a couple of years ago. <laughs> a couple <of> days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> but like, um, like you know, Perch Bader, Ghost, uh, Wave. Shift, oh yeah, yeah. Like Pur- Purbator is really good. Mm-hmm. But, like, I like that one too. Good driving music. Yeah, it's definitely driving music. Oh yeah. But I'm trying to think of uh, in terms of extreme yeah. metal. If there's any bands I consider. The, uh, the worship band better than the original, but I'm having, I'm having trouble, guys. Definitely, definitely hard, uh, hard question, and just sprung it on you guys. So, yeah, it, that that kind of answers. Mm, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't really have an answer for that one, honestly. Um, From the library of a of a metal man, right here. Yeah, because because <laughs> my immediate answer is no. But yeah, I, I honestly can't think of one that's better. This is comparable. This is pretty fucking comparable, so you know there's that. Yeah, I think I think if we got into some of the more niche corners of the genre, then maybe. But um, uh, even then, I'm having trouble like like summoning type bands. Oh, it's hard to. Hard to oh, oh, like Caledon Brood or something like that. Yeah, and Kim Strap and Blood. Like I really like those too, but uh, I think summoning was still. Win. Kind of better at it, maybe. Yeah. 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 Because th- there's a another band. Like if you look up horror on Metal Archives, you go to the similar artists. Um. There's another band I, it's called like Hexen Slot. Yeah. Hexen Slot. They do a demo from 2016. It's much more raw than this, and it's it's just not as good. It, it's good. It's still pretty damn cool. It's just not as good as this. I do like their logo though. Uh, the S in Slot is the like. S S. S. The lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, the lightning bolt. The rune. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was gonna say, with this sound, is it something you can only really get away with, like on a demo? Because no. I, I don't feel like many bands are. No, listen to fucking Beyond. That's a full album. Okay. Yeah, I, I could listen to a full album with this uh, of this sound. I have no problem with it. Well, yeah, I, meant, I, I meant like, like I meant like from the musician standpoint, like oh, they just want to do a demo of this sort of shit rather than uh, doing a full yeah, length. It, but you said uh, yeah, that, that's what it kind of seems like with this band because the, the the main guy from this band did this, and then like the three other projects he's in are all trad metal, so yeah. maybe yeah. that's his thing. But he also had like a interest in doing something like this, and uh, he did a, a an amazing job at it. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, because not only with uh, newer bands doing this sort of stuff, but some of the other bands that were contemporary or earlier than Necrovore that fitted this niche are all mainly sounding like that on the demos rather than, like, uh, pursuing this style further on full Uh, length, except for, like, maybe... I see what you mean. Yeah, except for, like, Sadistic Execution, I think. Yeah, sure. Sadistic Execution kind of did the wild thing forever. Yeah, there's like chaos, Australian shit. Yeah, yeah. But, we we always say axis of advance, but uh, you know, I I think this kind of that that kind of maybe uh, is accurate in some way. I feel that like, makes sense. I feel like this is a bit different from it is, it is Necrovore. Different. It's like this is a lot more primitive than like Axis and Sacramento. I think like they still yeah, got that savage sure. spirit. But they the spirit have at least is, yeah 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 the spirit at least is still there with this stuff it's more like just savagery yeah it's like and, melody uh, and the knowledge of all that shit and yeah filtering it well, through well that's the cool thing about horror is like th- there really isn't 
melodic parts, mm -mm. but there's at least like one or two almost melodic parts. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, just like, like the, the middle part of the song that we listen to. The first yeah, song. The, yeah, the change, change, That's not quite melodic. That's just thrash scale uh, or something. Some, yeah, some kind of half scale or something like that. I don't yeah. know anything about scales, so I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I would definitely listen to a whole album that like wouldn't uh, wouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah. I don't know why that uh, I don't know why that cut it so early, but I mean so it'd be on too. Well at least we got an album out of them. It's better than I think. Yeah. They gave us all they got. <laughs> Which is fine. It's yeah. just good. Yeah. Did, uh, uh, Dan, did you check out the other stuff from Beyond? Like that the enter or the transmigration, whatever the fuck that EP was called? Uh, the the, I know I heard the demo before the red one. Yeah, Enter Transcendence. I think it's. I've I've heard that before. Because after they they announced their split, they said that there were some reissues coming, and uh, then they self released a reissue of that EP, along with um, <clears throat> two more recordings of the same track, um, just like rehearsal versions, and then they also released uh, a CD of the Shapeless demos, which was like pre pre beyond oh and, no no uh, no i didn't know that and i've also never heard this uh transcendence uh ep i've i've only other thing was the the demo is what i heard before okay again because th that's that's the interesting thing too because this comes out in 2011 as well this uh you know same time kind of same idea mm. yeah so and the, I, these I songs i don't think anything they did top the album um but definitely worth hearing though no, but yes. Uh, at least one of these songs, uh, track two, is is still it made it made it to the uh, Beyond album, mm -hmm. "The Whirlwinds of Chaotic Carnage." Oh, that's such a good song. Yeah. Uh, something else I wanted to bring up. This is really not canonical or like chronological or anything. It's more of um, uh, just my brain the way it works. So like, the horror demo comes out two thousand eleven. And this is also the same year that the Beyond demo comes out. And the first Morbid, Morbus Cron album comes out and Repuked comes out all in that same year. Do you know who Repuked is? Yeah, but I don't think Repuked is really, um, I don't think Repuked is really proggy. But they are part of this, uh, they are part of this. And uh, where they fit into uh, what I wanted to bring up. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I sorry, I forgot to ask Fred. You know, who Repuked is. I know the name, but I haven't heard them. Oh, they're like um, people have referred to them as G.G. Allen, like, like G.G. Allen meets Autopsy. Yeah, punk Autopsy. Okay. It's kind of like a, a, a much more primitive abscess. Really, okay. Okay. really just gross, disgusting vocals. Really punk. Uh, you know what? What you would imagine a Swedish hardcore mixed with death metal band would be like in the be kind of in the best way i feel like this is one of the better bands yeah heavy especially yeah especially when this uh revival came around during this time 2011. um yeah i i wanted to bring up that like that th that all this this year is like really important to me too because like i think 2011 is the year that I, I I see. I think I was a junior in high school, like the sophomore, junior in high born. school. Yeah, and um, the year I was born. Yeah, I was in high school during this time when this stuff was coming out, and at the same time, this is when I'm getting really, really just like obsessed with uh, old old '90s death metal, mostly from Sweden and Finland, but uh, I, I if I remember correctly, probably shit from the states as well i think the shit from the states kind of came a little bit earlier like um late freshman year or something but uh anyways yeah also 2011 i think paul is that the same year that i met you yep yeah 2011 i'm getting super into death metal i meet paul and uh we cover repukes as like that's the first thing we do as a band we cover a repuke song and they liked it so much they reposted us on facebook <laughs> and that's one of our that's one of our most viewed videos along with the uh, cataclysm cover that we did and it's funny it's like uh what how, how did how did we even meet josh met you first right 
Yeah, so I'm over here walking into, uh, you know, an assembly and I'm wearing a brutal death metal shirt, my long hair and shit, and then, um... The hair down to his fucking ass. Yeah, and then uh, Josh sees me from the bleachers and he's like, do you like thrash? Yeah, it's just like before Josh hit puberty, so he has this like funny voice. Yo, yeah. you like thrash? Yeah, well, with like a rolled R. Thrash. Thrash. <laughs> and then I was like, um, no. And then I just kind of no. kind of walked away. <laughs> no. I just then, walked away from this kid. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, well, he was in the bleachers and I was walking my way up, uh, I guess, with yeah. the class. But uh, anyway, he uh, ends up in one of my classes, uh, video production. And then, um, you know, we're obviously talking about all this shit. He knows uh, you and uh, his brother is uh, also into Julian. thrash when you were with them. Yeah, yeah. We, were th we were thrash boys in high school. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're just talking. And then uh, just so happens that he happened to know Anthony. And then, um, and then we happened to know Anthony, too. We all happened to know each other, like, on some weird level. Yeah. And like, then, without knowing each other personally. <laughs> yeah, it was like we all... Uh, met but i don't think we've heard of each other and then um yeah and then greg the other josh's uh thrash friend too skater uh met with my twin brother daniel and um then they happened greg and josh were in the same fan group and at the time me and my brother were trying to actually separate <laughs> and like have different no. fan groups but then we yeah. ended up in the same one so we're just like fuck it <laughs> And then that's yeah. uh, that's how we met uh, Dan too. Yeah, at that time I think I was hanging out with the the football guys still. And then they decided to like go to the small quad, and I didn't want to go with them. And then I I, I already knew you know Julian was already my buddy, so I just uh, kind of joined you guys. But before that, before that, uh, I would see you walking in with Josh, and I didn't know you guys at the time. And I remember I saw you wearing a Dark Throne like just the logo T-shirt. And I was like, hey, dude, cool shirt. Yeah, you like Soul Side Journey? You're like, no. I, I think I asked you if you listen to Soul Side Journey. You're like, like no. no. And then in my head, I'm just like, poser. <laughs> 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 and then uh, you said, you said like, before we really talked, you said you saw me walking in the hallway. Like, this is when I had, like, a, a pretty short, like, buzzed haircut. And I had a flannel T-shirt with just one singular uh, the pestilence. pestilence. Patch pestilence uh, uh like logo patch and you said you thought i was a guy who used to listen to metal that's like the the <laughs> what you got yeah you're uh slowly uh letting go <laughs> hair and one patch at a time yeah 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 like there's one patch left short hair it's like it's like i'm barely hanging on to fucking metal <laughs> we're, we're losing them mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah that, that was our uh, origin story yeah, then we cover repukes and uh, start Droom, and um, I don't know, kind of never stopped since 2011, so it's been quite a bit that we've been jamming, because Paul wasn't even the drummer, really, originally. He, no. he was, him and his brother did dual vocals, like two fucking vocalists standing around. <laughs> yeah, and then decided to pick up the drums along the way. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, like, the, uh, like what you're into at, or what you're getting into at that time. I was telling you, Paul, the other night, I was, I got all drunk and I was like talking about this. Um, remember I was telling you like, I, I can remember riding my bike to summer school in like 2010. Mm -hmm. And I remember listening to uh, Summonings, uh, Nightshade Forest. It's epic shit. Yes, yeah, epic <laughs> shit. It's like epic summer, dude. <laughs> then that class was so much fun. I remember there was this like scene kid, this deathcore guy, his name was Ricardo. And he's like, what are you listening to, man? And I uh, gave him the earphones, and I was still listening to Nightshade Forest. And I don't know if you've ever heard that song, but there's a part that, like, it, it does these really sharp uh, keyboard things where it's like, dun, 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 like Lord of the Rings kind of stuff. And he's sitting there listening to this in my headphones. He's like, whoa, whoa. He started crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he liked it. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit funny uh, origin story. So to the, to my point, this this 2011 demo kind of gives me uh kind of kind of gives the 2011 feel cuz that was just a great year for me. Yeah, got you in the feels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a great, you know, still a kid discovering metal and just discovering stuff all the time, you know. And that was a great feeling, everything being very new and uh 
I, I feel like this is this is uh, one of those things. If it whether you know uh, Necrovore or not, it feels like horror is uh, it's a great discovery if you haven't heard it before. Yeah, Bring, kind of brings it back, right? Fred, what mm-hmm. was your uh, 2011 like? 2011 Met on your metal journey. Christ. Yeah, what were you doing in 2011? Uh, getting jaded. <laughs> <laughs> like it's cynical shit. Because <laughs> um, like I went to a lot. So 2011 uh, was kind of like the uh, climax of me being involved in metal for quite a while. Um, it was like I was still taking university courses and I was uh, working part time and I was going to a lot of shows um, watching other bands rehearse etc and that was that was a good time uh, there were a lot of really good concerts in the Toronto area around that time um, both local bands and uh, uh, international bands coming to play and uh, uh, after that I kind of started working full time and kind of dropped off the face of the planet for a while insofar as metal is concerned. Uh, and I didn't really go to another show until like 2017. <gasps> and that was, uh, that was really weird. <laughs> but like, I never like fell off the wagon in terms of listening to the stuff and- uh, Sure, that, that's that's okay. You know, shows, I, I, I get that. I don't go to that many shows. I'm kind of at that point. Where it's like, you know, go to some shows, but I, I get the jaded feeling a little bit when it when it comes to uh, going out and doing all these things. You know, for a long time, me and Paul were just like, oh, I, you know, I'd, we'd rather just rehearse and uh, and record rather than play yeah. a bunch of shows and go to a bunch of shows because all that stuff really is inhibiting to uh, like continuing to 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 record and write and you know put out new music. Yeah, be uh, productive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing you know, going songs. out and partying and being social. You know, it's it's cool, but it gets old after a while, it's and it's uh, yeah. it is exhausting. You know, and it's it really is easier to just be like, okay, uh, come here to the uh, our rehearsal place, and let's just kind of continue on and go on go about our lives. <laughs> yeah, in a kind of relaxing way. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up. Um, was that niche genre or not even a genre just a time from uh you know 1985 or earlier but that's mostly when the demos i was finding that were in the grouping of like necrovore sounds like more unhinged kind of stuff yeah like well when i was like looking into it because i i haven't really checked out too much of this shit but you know this week i was you know taking a real uh uh, listening deep listening to a lot of this shit and um i think i might be in the the demo uh camp of uh preferring that over full lengths at least for these bands like um like nuclear death uh welcome to the minds of the morbid and um sadistic execution 1987 demo uh vor 1985 demo that one's really fucking good and, um, Evil metal. Yeah, and uh, Insanity from San Francisco. Oh yeah, yeah. Insanity is really good. Yeah, and then uh, the Death Strike 1985 demo too. That one's really fucking good. The album is still very good as well. Yeah, I think that one was 85 too, wasn't it? The album. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I, I just saw the demo as 85. I'm not sure um, when they Hello. released the album, but. Um, also, have you guys heard the Necro Death, the Shining Pentagram? Yes. Dude, that that shit was like surprisingly melodic and primitive at the fucking same time. Yep. Yeah, that was that was like really really good. Caught me by surprise, especially from there's, like Italy. Dude, no I've never heard it. I've heard the, uh, the 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 two albums, Into the Macabre and Fragments of Insanity, but never the never the demo. Yeah, check out yeah, the demo. Okay. All right, there's I'll check a, that out. a split CD that was released by uh, Terror from Hell, if I remember correctly, um, that pl- that has the um, the ne- Necro Death demo, mm-hmm. and it also has their uh, predecessor band, uh, Ghost Rider, their demo in there. As oh, well. you know, I I listened to that too. I was I was like, um, 
I was, you know, checking out the Necro Death, and then I saw, you know, Ghost Rider. I was like, it's a, you know, pretty funny name, but it was actually really good too. Yeah. Well, maybe you're thinking of the Nicolas Cage sure movie. That. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we just have to make sure your son's not the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Nicolas Cage's son in like some symphonic black metal band. I remember listening to them. They're not too bad. <laughs> I don't think I've heard them. <laughs> yeah, but uh, to finish off my list of uh, other demos I was listening to, uh, Parabellum, uh, Sacrilegio. Yes. Dude, that one's that fucking... The, that's the Colombian band, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that one's insane. Dude, they like drop out the drums for like two minutes and they just like hold this fucking tremolo, uh, these just tremolo note passages. Like, it's fucking so good. That Colombian ultra metal scene was ridiculously good. Ultra it, metal. Is uh, Reincarnation uh, part of that? I would yeah. say so. Reincarnation, uh, Nemesis, Necromanti, Sacrilegio, uh, Astaroth. Oh my god, Astaroth. Were, Haven't didn't, checked that out. Didn't put out a lot, but my god, was it good. And uh, Herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever give your name of the Herpes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, um, uh, obviously, uh, or you guys heard Dr. Shrinker, right? Oh, yeah. Wedding the Grotesque, yeah. Mm hmm. That one's great. That one's great. And then, um, for newer bands, even though this one isn't too new, uh, uh Martyr from Australia. Yeah. Oh, Martyr. Yeah, yeah, Martyr. yeah. That one was excellent. 1991. Yeah, totally unhinged thrash stuff. And, like, how the fuck did they get that production sound? Analog? I always hear about, I don't know what the difference between analog and. It's basically not digital. Yeah, like on tape. Yeah, but it like comes out so different sounding. Yeah, it's, it's like insane. That's like what the digital is trying to emulate. But um, yeah, th yeah, there there was a couple of those. Um, or what were you gonna say, Paul? Yeah, but like this, that band in particular, they were like one of the first I've heard in like this kind of chaotic style, and yeah, they really stuck with me. And then uh, obviously not so much to the same extent, but more of like what they're throwing into uh the, sh the song is like raven darks uh monarchical canical sure sure they, yeah. they they come into it in a kind of slower yeah version just more mid but, but thrashy yeah but but still they're they're throwing everything at the table and they're they're pretty chaotic sloppy uh awesome yeah and then uh death speed from japan really fucking good too but Pos don't possessed don't by know speed. if i don't know if I know that one. Are they old or that's a new band? No, nah, that's old too. It's like, I think it's 85 too. It says Death Metal Grind Core 1986. Or did you listen to the Possessed, oh, Possessed by Speed? You said yeah, 1988. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I've oh, never heard of these guys. There you go. Yeah, that one's really fucking good. I'm sure Fred heard it. Uh, that was a movie, actually. Yeah, I've never, I've never fucking heard of that either. Damn. But yeah, you guys got any uh, wrecks like that? Yeah, um, uh, An Angel Death from Italy. Angel they Death? Put out, they put out a demo in 80, uh, I want to say 85, 85 or 86. Um, and that was more of a death, thrash, black sort of thing. Um, and later on, and by later on, I mean like 91, they turned death metal. And it was a really weird kind of death metal. It had like this like bellowing, uh, loud kind of vocals that weren't really shouted so much as just amplified yeah, it was it was weird but uh worth checking out um uh, uh the death I, to sure christianity we, i think so it's, okay uh, yeah i'll check out the demos yeah, yeah. italy too going has it going and, on uh, I, I know we've probably heard this but masters 85 demo oh yeah the, yeah uh, the unreleased one in quotations oh my god that's my favorite master it's just insane well i know the album and i and i like that so I'll, I'll check out the demo as well yeah um i had a couple of like a, a, a lot of ones that were kind of in comparison with this but a couple of ones that maybe you guys haven't heard of so what do we have um i have fred have you ever heard of a band called hell house they have a it it's a it's a solo project and it's from it's one of the guys from a band called New York City Mayhem. You ever heard of that? Yes, that I've heard of. Yeah, so it's one of the guys from that and 
it's it's yeah hell house 1985 they have a demo and it's too it's way too fucking brutal to be 1985 it almost sounds like mortician or something the vocals are <laughs> that kind of shit like Vaughn, and then you have man. a drum then you have a drum machine and you have these like Vaughn kind of riffs it's fucking insane it's like baffling that this came out in 1985 huh. yeah so the hell house one um, I guess in comparison with with the, oh oh another one that maybe you guys haven't heard of uh, a band called Necromancy from Canada, they have a demo in yes. 1986. That's a pretty yep. heavy one. Yep. The Soothsayer was really. Wild. Yeah yeah yeah, Soothsayer yeah, but I, I feel like that kind of is is a little bit more on the the punk side. Punk but but still. Straight up thrash too. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but still. Um, I, I guess another one that that's pretty fucking intense for being '86 is uh, the band Devastation. That creation of Ripping Death demo. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one's pretty fucking insane. Yep. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Paul? No, oh, just you guys said thrash. I was like, ew. Yeah, ew. <laughs> it, it, you nah, know, thrash you is cool, really dude. Get much in that time period without having some thrash influence in it. Yeah, oh, but yeah, yeah, of course. More, more of a thrash or uh, thrash as a tool is better than, uh, you know, uh, being the whole uh, entity of the band. I think. Yeah, I guess the that's that's kind of interesting because I don't know if you guys have ever seen the uh, the short Necrovore interview that they did. Yeah, I, I think, think I it, saw it. Yeah, it must be from '88 or something, because when they talk about their music he says like it's it's he talk when he talks about his own band he says it's very intelligently made music you know so that's suggesting that it's not just a bunch of random noise that it's uh, or not just a bunch of random parts thrown together that it's like that he really meant for all of that to to kind of be a part of something and he al he also mentions that like he wants the the main guy wants to push metal forward mm -hmm. and kind of you know make people because he, 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 he complains that the metal scene is stagnating mm -hmm. and this is like 88 so you know maybe that's maybe just his point of view or maybe that's saying something I'm not sure yeah giving uh, IDM a whole new meeting um, intelligent <laughs> death metal intelligent death metal Set up yeah intelligent but 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 music. but he also said he straight up says um, we're influenced by possessed and we're taking possessed to where they should have gone instead of where they did go after their first album yeah yeah and i and i thought that too i'm like dude possessed is pretty fucking insane for the year it comes out and the quality of the album the way it is and and for as young as those guys were i think they were like 17 when that album came out those rodo tom so yeah, yeah. There's, there's so. I think there's still so much to to take from uh, Possessed, even though it's a classic and it's so old and and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's all the same. Like with death metal now, it's like, how precise can you get? How heavy can you get it? Let's take advantage of the production. Let's uh, and know, also sample all the hits so they sound the yeah. same and heavy yeah. and and also perfect. be creative with the riffs or something. You know. Yeah, it's like at least. Bring the fucking savagery back to to metal, you know. Like we need more of that and like more, um, more just. It's always not. It's always shit. not boring. Yeah, it's always not boring when bands do that. Yeah. Well, that's why you know we possess Paul. Oh, not possessed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I gotta listen to them for sure. That'll yeah, be my one takeaway. Yeah, that, that I I listened to that when I was getting into. Uh, like I, I always kind of went through, not phase, like kind of eras where I'm kind it's of just phase. super. It's not a phase. Yeah, but eras where <laughs> where I'm like super obsessed with one type of thing, and yeah. Beyond came from an era where like I was in Funeral Smoke, and I kind of had to be listening to uh, Black Death and War Metal and stuff, and Beyond was just one of those that uh, that came through, and was awesome. Yeah. I remember when you were first listening to that shit. I thought it was a bit boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, a lot, a lot of it is, but uh, there's some good stuff sprinkled in there. Yeah, there's uh, definitely some standouts. You know, and uh, 
bringing up that Necrovore interview, what he was saying about uh, possessed, uh, we were t- we like kind of briefly talked about ascended dead last week. Did you ever get a chance to listen to any of that? No, not yet. No. Yeah, I I saw, I saw a little bit of an interview, and the uh, main guy, the main songwriter from Ascended Dead, he says pretty much the same thing. He says uh, we're influenced by Necrovore and Possessed. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I might have to go back and listen to the first one because I don't remember anything from it. I remember it was really popular. That's really all I remember. It is a really good album. It's just that weird little interlude that I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Sticks you yeah. out of it? Yeah, it, it really does. And uh, it, uh, I think the album would be better without that there. But that's, that's yeah, y- y- <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing that I could say about uh, Ascended Dead, uh, when it comes to how 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 accessible they are with kind of anybody really i feel like they're kind of on the same page as like omega vortex it's really dissident there's as far as i've heard and as far as i can remember there's really not that much um catchy stuff it's a lot of just a lot of chaos i'll I'll just say that a lot of chaos yeah it's a it's pretty hellish sound i guess yeah, I, I like it. It's cool stuff, but um, it, it might take a few listens to, uh, to to really grasp, I guess. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, same with um, this other band that I was checking out. Uh, I'm kind of late to this party. I know this band uh, a lot of people liked, uh, The Spirit Possession. Yeah. I was actually just writing up, uh, wrapping up a review I wrote for, the, uh, for a magazine uh, for that uh, second album. You heard it here first. Heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> well, can, uh, well, you, you, so you, you wrote it. You did write a review on that. Yep. Wow. Okay. So, what? Um, maybe just in a very, very short version. What? What did? <laughs> what do you think of that? Can you, just can for you like a minute. A, can you read us the review? No, 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 no. We don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> just a brief uh, summary. What do you think? I, I love the first album, and I love the second album too. It's. Uh, it's kind of a bit more of a unique approach than we tend to see these days. Um, mm-hmm. The description that stuck to me for the first album, and I think it works for the second album as well, uh, is early Bathory, so like self-titled era Bathory, uh, crashing into world without end era um, catharsis. It has those yeah, bizarre, yeah. like, echoing... Uh, vocals and just noodly thrashy riffs that just kind of take you in a million different directions. Uh, it's a very chaotic sounding release without being anywhere close or related to war metal in any significant sense, which I appreciate because a lot of bands rely on just literally making noise for chaos uh, and these guys don't. They legitimately just have riffs that take you in different directions and you're like what the fuck just happened <laughs> yeah the riffs sick. are re- yeah the riffs are really strange they're almost like um i don't want to say proggy but if if i could compare them to any prog band i, I would probably say voivod and in, in kind of the way that uh, the strange guitar work is is done mm-hmm. yeah i don't think that's uh i don't think that's an unfair comparison like they they pull some weird shit off and I think Voivod was definitely influenced, even if it might not be an immediately obvious influence. Um, it's definitely in there. Yeah, and I, I think um, with a, an important thing that uh, Spirit Possession does is is also have the catchiness. Because I, I listened to that um, yesterday, just driving around, and there's a lot of like straight up uh, speed metal parts in there. Mm-hmm. You were listening to the first album or second? No, I was listening to the the new one, the second one. Okay. Yeah, cause it, that that's what's kind of strange about this thing. I also wanted to bring this up for like a quick second. Um, Spirit Possession. So, their their genre on Metal Archives is under black metal, but Omega Vortex is under death metal, and I feel like these two bands are 
pretty pretty damn similar to each other in what they do. I feel like Spirit Possession is a little more original and a little bit more um, interesting. But I, I, I feel like they're extremely close. But one is death metal, one is black metal. It's like, I, the, these two bands really draw a distinction. But I don't know that there's that much of a distinction that they could be two different genres. You know what I mean? I'd have to give Omega Vortex a listen. It's, uh, I'm very curious now, though. Yeah, it. I, I keep coming back to that. I, I keep um, wanting to listen to that one. It, it's pretty interesting. Okay, worth uh, worth noting. That'll be my takeaway mm-hmm. for this one. Yes, sir. Paul, Paul's got Beyond. I've got Omega Vortex. And Dan, you got um. I got the uh, fucking uh, Necro Death uh, fucking demo. Yep. And also that other band you said, Death Speed. Is that what they were called? Yeah, Possessed by yeah. Speed. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Um, you guys want to get some final words going for these for this uh for this whore? Are we almost done? Or, I mean, are we uh, just about done? Yeah, I think so, unless you guys got some more things to talk about. I, I could talk about bullshit all day. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I kind of want to go for for just a, a minute more here. Go for it. Or for, for a little bit and see what uh, we can get out of this. So, this uh, horror, you know, obviously got uh, all of us, or, you know, me and you, Paul, thinking about Necrodeath. And that kind of got me thinking about... Um, you mean Necrovore? Sorry, Necrovore. Yes. Not the, red, not the I'm red. on my I'm on my fourth beer. I said Necro Death instead of Necrovore. Yeah, necro not, wretch. Oh, necro a, bitch. Necro cunt. You <laughs> fucking cunt. <laughs> yeah, not the most redundant uh, name ever. Necro no, Death. it's not. <laughs> you remember when Junior uh, throws the pie in that lady's face? Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, "You fucking blabbermouth cunt." <laughs> <laughs> He eats her out. <laughs> yeah, he eats her out, and then Tony knows about it. He's like, "The tuna fish uh, jumping." <laughs> He's like, "What the fuck?" He's like, shut, shut your fucking mouth. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, so you want to be a fucking funny boy too? <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah>, good <June. laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah. what were you saying about Necovore? I was saying uh, you like Ralphie and the Goonies. <laughs> 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 yeah, that one scene I saw. Joey Pants. I think I like that. Any, any, anyways, I kind of, yeah, I was thinking about kind of the uh, early, we, we've talked about this before, but the earliest shit that's, uh, that's heavy, like really heavy and extreme. Um, and I was kind of thinking about like, what is, what is the timeline? We kind of touched on this a little bit with Roman, uh, I think the, not the, the first time, the first time that we talked to him. <clears throat> So, uh, when it comes to like heavy metal and like extremity and shit, Judas Priest. We have Judas Priest in 1974. Okay, right. it's still it's still very boogie woogie rock and roll. It's not quite getting there yet, right? Boogie and at the same at roll. the same time, we have uh, Diamond Head '77. We have Motorhead '77, and uh, we you know those bands are probably influenced by like Ted Nugent and Montrose and Sweet and like. UFO or something, I would assume. But, but then, then you, you have. But then you got even like, uh, you know, Lemmy obviously and Hawkwind probably listened to a lot of progressive '70s shit too. Cause yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. At times too. Yeah, yeah. So we can we can kind of lump uh, all the the prog rock, all the metal adjacent stuff. We can lump all that in there. But I think uh, this is what Roman touched on. This is what got me thinking about this. Was uh, Angel Witch has a demo in 1978 where they're doing like Celtic frostish black metalish kind of shit and it's pretty fucking uh pretty incredible pretty, pretty, pretty good. good yeah 1978 it's like isn't that pretty fucking early to be doing stuff like this yeah, you're not allowed yet yeah, yeah you're not allowed yes we have angel yeah, witch 1978 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut the crap <laughs> <laughs> so yeah buddy yeah, super Fucking devil juice. Face. Yeah. <laughs> okay, about a four piece. Let's go. <laughs> All right, and then we have uh, Iron Maiden, nineteen seventy nine, and Hello. then we, yeah, then we have <laughs> then we have Venom, nineteen eighty. But that's, yeah, have you guys heard the Venom demo from nineteen eighty? No. It's 
still kind of boogie woogie rock. They have a different singer. It's not Kronos, and they're playing Raise the Dead. Hmm. She's like, we will raise the dead. <laughs> it's really not, it's barely metal. It's it's not what Venom is. But anyways, Venom becomes heavy in 19, er, 1981. And then uh, I guess, I guess this is where, if Sad. you're not counting, no, if you're not counting, well, yeah, kind of, actually. If you're not counting, um, if you're not counting Venom's 1981 album, but this kind of uh, continues off of that. Hellhammer, Death Fiend, 1983. Ooh. That's pretty damn spooky for <laughs> for that kind of shit. But then uh, I I think this is the year. This is the year where things actually get extreme. 1984, we have Sodom in the Sign of Evil, right? Kind of a classic. Yeah. Is that 1984? Yeah, self-titled. Holy, the the album is fucking 1984. I missed that one. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Holy shit. So Bathory, 1980, yeah, okay, so here we go. 1984 is the year. Wow, man, I, I thought it was 85. I didn't even realize it was um, that fucking nuts. Okay, so that just adds to it. 1984, you got Bathory's uh, self-titled, and you have Sodom's In the Sign of Evil, and you also have Poison, Sons of Evil. You guys ever heard that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy sh... It's not particularly great, but it's it's there. And you also have uh, the death demo. <laughs> Story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> you have the death demo, and you have the possessed demo, 1984. And you have fucking uh, Slayers haunting the chapel, 1984. Holy shit. 1984 is the year where extreme metal is... Bo well, ca kind of getting there, right? Don't break the oath as well. I, I, that's extreme metal. Uh, what does that come out in 84? Yep. Don't break the oath. Get dope. I, I, is that as extreme, though? Or is that more kind of, uh, uh, more crazy heavy metal? To me, like, uh, like a, a, you think so? I, I consider it black metal. Okay, okay, that's fair. Well, Fred, you are wrong. No, no, I wouldn't say. No, 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 I wouldn't say Fred is I've never wrong. I've been wrong about anything in my life. <laughs> you know what? He might be right there, but yeah, that that really fits in too to all this stuff that the extreme shit really comes in. 1984, haunting the chapel, and then uh, then it's kind of like the floodgates are open. Possessed 85, Hell House 85, Creator. Dark Angel 86, fucking Necromancy 86, Warfare Noise, the the compilation. Volcano. One, one Creator, thing you missed bro. in '84, though. Uh, what is that? I'm sure I did. Destru destruction. Sentence of death. Okay. There's another one. Brutal. Uh, Dark Angels album, 1986. Uh, Slaughter Lords demo, 1986. Die by power. Do do do. Die by power. Uh, Mephisto was '86. Awesome. From Sweden, the Swedish band. Yep. I yeah, thought they were '85 actually. Awesome. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Either. Maybe I'm thinking of Messiah. Yeah, there, there's not really, a, there's not really a, a, a point to this. I just want, I just kind of wanted like give a canonical. Uh, wanted your nips get blown off again, huh? Yeah, I just want a canonical <laughs> like, uh, bruh, metal's been fucking extreme for a long time, and I feel like even even something like 1981's Venom, if you play that for like a normal person, they will not like it, and it's too much. It's not rocking enough. <laughs> it's too fucking extreme. Yeah, if you play the Angel Witch demo, you're by, by yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta listen to that, though. Yeah, but you also have Devastation 86, Morbid Angel 86, uh, Obscurity and Mayhem, Toten 87, Incubus, Necrovore. Yep. You know, yada, yada. Scum. But, uh, <laughs> scum? Yeah, scum, scum too. Carcass. Dudes. Scum and Carcass. Yeah, dude. But then, uh, but then the I... Scum I was gonna the bring Sonic this ripping, up to, uh, um, What's that? Not only with, um, you know, metal being heavy, because you know, obviously, a lot of it came from uh, hardcore and uh, punk at the time. Like even, sure. I think like uh, Doom uh, from UK. I think they're how old really are they? Early too. Um, I have to. 
have to check, but uh um, Well remember I was showing you that band Siege. They're nineteen eighty four, they're doing crazy blast beats too. Yeah, they're doing like fast core shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to find uh When you said fast core that reminded me of that Japanese band, Fuck on the Beach, you remember them? Yeah, power Fuck on Beach <laughs> Yeah, that shit's good. But uh like discharge and shit like that too. Um let me see. Yeah, I think Discharge has one in 1982. Yeah, they got a demo 77, the first one. Ooh. What year was Amoebix? I think Amoebix? that's 85, too. Yeah, Amoebix is uh, mid-80s. Yeah, so it's like they're getting a lot of this. Uh, oh, it looks like um, Arise is 85, but they've been going since 79. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I think like a lot of they're getting a lot of uh, like at least just heaviness in general. Not so much extreme metal, but a lot of this is also coming from, you know, this crust uh, UK scene and shit. Yeah, you brought up, uh, or Fred brought up Amoebix. That reminded me of um, the uh, the Black Twilight Circle compilation. You guys are familiar with that one, right? Yeah. Uh, I know a couple of which one. The, uh, the, uh, the, I, little, the little book there. Yeah, it's called like Teliktik Taluka Kakeka. Also, there's a narrow But it's the comp. It's the comp. It's like the only compilation that they did. It's like 15 or 16 songs long. They no, they did a couple compilations. They did like, oh, did uh, they? Yeah, they did a double CD, and that's like. A yeah, the the one with the double CD. That's the one I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the Amoebix thing. Um, I think it's the last song on that. There's a the band. It's the main guy from Volon. But it's uh, his band is called Axeman, uh, at the very end of it, and so I, I guess that's like really Amoebix um, influence. If you guys haven't heard that one in a while, listen to that one. It is a fucking epic song, man. I, I forget what it's called, but it's the last song on the compilation, Axeman. Hmm. Um, oh, it's called Ride Into the Night. That's the name of it. It is really fucking cool. Yeah, because there's another band that's sort of like um, Amoebix Axe Grinder on uh, Peaceville. So I'm wondering if they got it from there, Axe Man. Um, maybe. Yeah, that's a good album too from 89. But, yeah, uh, I, I, I guess the, the last thing I wanted to bring up with this is I was listening to um, a little bit of Venom today. And uh, I was listening to The Witching Hour, which a, is, I, a, think, I think that might be my favorite Venom song. A little Witching bit Hour. of Venom. Yeah, a little bit of Venom. Listen to some Venom songs. But uh, there's a part in there that's like a little interstitial part that doesn't mean much. But I think this might have to do with like a lot of why thrash bands do this. There's like this kind of cowboyish western uh, interstitial riff in uh, Witching Hour where it goes... And then it goes... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's like some new wave... Yeah, but I, I feel like uh, that shit. that's maybe the reason a lot of bands are doing like chugga chugga like Dark Angel does it and Slayer oh, yeah. and Yeah, maybe maybe that's the whole thing there. I didn't really have a point there. I kinda just wanted to I always love love to go into this like uh chronological extremity little thing. Yeah, you're good. We stopped recording a while ago. You're good. Oh did oh did we? No. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> you got me fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we stopped recording the second we started talking. Yep. He said one more thing, and that was it. I guess I'm the asshole here. <laughs> <laughs> We're all the asshole. <laughs> yep. Um, so last words or what? Fuck the assholes. <laughs> or no, what was that uh, SOD song? Kill all the assholes. Bigger than the devil. What <laughs> I didn't hear that. What was that? He says that well that killed that party. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing? The last words on the uh, horror demo? Yeah. Uh Dude, it, it it's solid. It's fucking excellent. It's something you can come back to all the time. It's just a uh, quick totally little demo. solid thing. Yeah, quick. And um show your buddies, you'll impress them. Don't say anything. Just put it on. While you're really high driving. <laughs> but uh, Fred, you got something to say? Uh, 
Come on, yeah, buddy. Like, like I said, of all the uh, albums that we've reviewed so far... Uh, Obviously not my picks, right? Uh, no, no. Those are <laughs> but... Oh! <laughs> Damn! No. But the ones that I didn't know yet... Uh, she... Because, like, like, Avenger I already knew and, uh, and so forth. Uh, this one uh, is, like, the best new one to me that I've had so far. Uh, and it's... Uh, It's nice to see bands playing in this style because you don't, you don't, I don't see it often as often as I'd like. And not so, as good. Another one that, uh, yeah, no, not as good either. So hearing one that actually manages to pull it off, but that's something I like dicks, uh, worked out pretty well. Um, uh, aside from that, we'll listen to uh, Mutilated. Yeah, I got to do oh, that yeah. for sure. My Okey other dokey. takeaway. Mutilated. Yeah, disabled, since we're talking about France. <laughs> disabled? Yeah, it has uh, Chris Moyen's uh, brother. Uh, do me a favor. What's the name of the uh, mutilated demo? Uh, I forget because I have a compilation that just has all of them on there. Uh, mutilated. Hang on. Well, they're, they're from France. So I'll look up mutilated France death metal. Just just so I remember to listen. Yeah, to but this there's, thing. there's one demo in particular I like more than the rest. But um, <laughs> oh, dude, I, I apparently like I have listened to this already. I already have it under my liked video. Psycho death lunatics. Yeah. Yes, yeah, psycho the death one, lunatics. The one, the one from '88. Yeah, All right, and disabled. Yeah. Uh, yep. Is is a death metal band dis, uh, disabled? Yeah. Uh, there are oh, here more, they are. Like, straight, straightforward death metal, but. Um, 1993, the fall of Christ. Yeah. The desecration and, uh, of Christ. The desecration of Christ. The desecration. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little infest dead reference for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you go. Those are my final thoughts. Listen to a different man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's so quick right. you can. <laughs> All right. But, well, uh, yeah, I was gonna say my final words. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, great, uh, great demo. Fucking in a style that really opened up um, uh, an avenue for me to listen to more. Like not only the demos I mentioned, but the ones Fred did as well. And uh, it's like really bringing out, uh, it seemed like dead dead metal to me because like no one's really ever doing it besides I guess Beyond, like you guys mentioned. Taking the good savage parts uh, from death metal rather than focusing on the heaviness, more of the like schizophrenic nature of uh, you know primordial death metal. And uh, yeah, I'm glad we're able to cover this one because it's, you know, deserves it and it's I think everyone would like it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.